Greetings. Today we have a video illustration of what Elon Musk means by beast mode. An ice engine versus a flat torque engine. In this case it's a Toyota truck uh, that's rolling on uh, uh, it's a fuel cell truck but it illustrates the point of what the difference is between a truck that has a flat uh, curve versus what a truck that has uh, a normal ice curve looks like on takeoff. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. This is our final post, uh, post before we get a chance to take a look at the brand new truck from Tesla. The Gates for Chase Nock Emma, also by Binance Stars, which is Nihao Ma, a German, uh, little Chinese. I wanted to uh, do a brief post today because one of the things that Elon talked about before, and we'll talk about uh, this evening, November the 16th of 2017, is a concept he calls this vehicle will be a beast. And what he was meaning by that is the fact that when you have a truck that has a flat torque curve, it all of a sudden has advantages in terms of how it moves versus vehicles that have a torque curve that's consistent with most ICE vehicles. I'm intrigued about this because, you know, there are certain people called customers. And when you build a product, those customers that pay for it, all the metrics they, they, they think are important uh, will drive uh, both short and long-term usage of those that vehicle and features. Um, Elon Musk has been really pr proud of the uh, torque curve phenomenon of electric vehicles and he's also been proud of sort of highlighting uh, how it shows up on the track when it comes to the Model S versus other vehicles and now how trucks illustrate it in terms of you know how the vehicle moves compared to an ICE engine. I'm fascinated because he seems hyper focused on this issue but for customers where every penny of cost savings is what they're really focused on. You know, I really think that um, the Tesla truck is a winner. One, because it exists, there aren't that many vehicles that are ready to haul the biggest loads long distances. And, and at an average of 18 miles per gallon versus the current six miles a gallon that diesel trucks offer. So by simply adding up the 50% reduction in cost of repairs, regenerative braking, along with the, um, the fuel savings, um, the solution of the truck is so compelling that it being a torque monster or being able to do beast mode is uh, almost irrelevant. But I guess we can have some fun with it for the heck anyway because um, it does add form factors in that when a truck can move that quickly, um, there's a concept in business called time value of money. So if those, if a truck is able to get to highway speeds quicker, there's a certain amount of time that's not lost uh, in those vehicles, um, you know, laboring miles before they can come up to highway speed. It also should be noted that if you have sort of hill climbing situations, the uh, torque curve can be helpful because you can get up to speed even in the, in the mountains where there's a lot of gear shifting, etc., to get the right calibration right. Not to mention the number of trucks that burn out their brakes and on the downhill side of giant mountains end up in tough situations where, in the case of a, uh, an electric truck, they benefit from recharge of battery as well as being able to sort of use the engine or, or or motor of the vehicle to help in the descent from those mountain passes. So this brings up the fact that I actually think that one of the biggest applications for early users is going to be in mountainous situations because of how it optimizes the space. It's such an optimized space 
for the use of an electric vehicle. So what I've decided to do is have rolling footage going next to me of the two trucks in action, first at full speed and then at slow speed, just so you can get a feel for what the numbers look like for the speed of the vehicles taking off. Um, obviously, this is not one of our longer videos based on the fact that, you know, sort of the core point that we're trying to make is focused. The uh, focused on simply the, the conversation of beast mode and, and what that torque implies relative to the performance of Tesla's products. I, you know, final conclusion on this whole thing and, and that I think is awesome, which we'll be covering particularly after the truck is announced, is starting to break down the numbers on pulling together what, um, you know, Tesla's going to offer a price to their customers. There's also going to be what I call um, an effective yield that customers are encountering. So what is this about? Well, when I started off the process of this, based on listening to, to folks like Bob Lutz, etc., I really thought that the way things were going to work in the conversation from customers is they were going to look at Tesla and go, okay, Tesla, for a nice 80,000-pound uh, truck, um, it cost about $130,000. So if you guys can give us a $130,000 bill for your new electric truck, we'll buy them and save the planet with pollution and everything will be great. And so it was kind of a like-for-like -like comparison is what I had expected. As I dug into the research, what started to pop up is the fact that um, when you have a situation where, for giggles, if you look at the numbers, let's say a truck goes 500,000 miles a year, the fact that they're going, they're getting six miles a gallon in that truck creates a certain fuel bill. In the case of the Tesla vehicle, if we actually had it go the same 500,000 miles, that uh, fuel bill will be one third of what is being experienced currently in those diesel trucks. So, what starts to happen is that if you have a fuel bill that just got cut in a third, even though the front-end price that uh, is being charged might be higher, in this case, Tesla can afford to, to be competitive with the, uh, with the diesel engines, but bottom line is fuel as a variable cost is the largest cost they have, and the fuel cost can easily equal the initial purchase price of the truck and trailer uh, in in year one, you know, the, that variable cost is so high that when you're talking about saving that much money, you can start playing around with numbers like, oh, your truck expends $150,000 a year in fuel. Our electric truck, um, so, so yeah, I think that's a low number. Let's say a truck is, is rolling, let's say it's 500,000 miles divided by six. So if it was five miles per, you know, that equivocates to $100,000 in, uh, well, it's 250 a gallon times 100, 100K. So let's say at 500,000 miles, you're at about $200,000 a year in fuel for that distance. So not only do you have to pay the price of 130, but you have an additional $200,000 a year in fuel that you're expending through that vehicle. Now, Tesla could theoretically say, oh, you know, like in the case of UPS, what I believe is going to occur is UPS's fuel costs are going to drop to near zero. So in theory, you could say to UPS, Mr. UPS, um, our vehicle is going to cost you, let's say a regular ICE vehicle costs you 130. Uh, we're going to charge you $225,000 for that vehicle. And after you pay your $220,000, you now have no fuel costs uh, for the rest of the life of the vehicle. So, you know, somewhere between two and $300,000, I don't think UPS blinks because fuel is a variable cost that's so high and even if they paid a big number in year one, when you amortize a vehicle over three to five years, uh, the amount of money saved is off the chart. So the value proposition is even high, extremely high. 
let's add into the fact that um, you have all these parts and so forth that you save on for repairs, etc. It all adds up to a huge value proposition that goes with electric. And prices for an electric truck could be anywhere from two to three hundred thousand dollars, and the customers could care less because they're getting double or triple the value in all forms of costs. And in the case of beast mode here, we even get a form factor benefit of uh, you know movement of truck and time saved by drivers by not being in slow move situations. So I kind of bring all this up because it's going to be fun to see the vehicle delivered. They're not going to necessarily have drag races between ice and electric trucks going on. I really think it's just a basic introduction of the truck. Hence the benefit of getting a chance to see what video looks like of an ice situation versus what it might do on the clock against a fuel cell or electric vehicle that has a flat torque curve. Look forward to your comments on this as well as the outcome of the event this evening. Uh, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. Tschüss, macht's gut. Au revoir. Lahit rahot. Choda hafez.